Hello, my friends, and welcome to, well, a video. It's sort of a blog, but it's something I need to share because, um, well, I hadn't been doing this in a while, but here it goes. Now, I got a lot on my mind, but um, let me tell you about what happened to me um, a few hours ago. And it lead to other things that have been on my mind since. So, over this weekend, and mind you, this is um, Memorial Day weekend. I checked my Twitter feed that following week prior up to this weekend and went down to the Reef. It's located downtown L.A., up the corner of Broadway and Washington, right across the street. And I've never went to this place before, even though I heard about it. Now, the history behind it is I used to go to this local comic book and sci-fi expo that always happened to fall upon Oh, every, um, every second Sunday, like right around 11 to 5, and it used to be right over at the Shrine Auditorium. And that's right by USC. <clears throat> and I have fond, mem fond memories of going down there, spending eight bucks just to get in. Sometimes it'd be cheaper, sometimes it'd be more than that, but, I mean, when it first started, it was like five bucks just to get in, and then it just went up to, you know, six and seven and eight, and then after that, I think it was after uh, COVID that it moved location from the Shrine Auditorium over to the Reef. I had not heard from that place since. So, today... And by the time I put this up, it'll be um, the next day, which will be Sunday. Um, so what I did was I went to this um, this party held by Bamco. You know them better as Bandai Namco. And it was for this character right here known as Pac-Man. And for those who don't know, Pac-Man launched video games. Pac-Man basically pioneered the whole ship. Everybody say Pong was the first game. Yes. No disrespect to Pong. But if it wasn't for Pac-Man, basically, we would not get everything that you see now. So since today was Pac-Man's birthday, it's only fair that since I hail from a family of Pac, my mother and father, they both they both played Pac-Man when I was like um, around four or five, and I caught them playing Pac-Man on the Atari 7900. That's what we had back then. I was I was PC born, so that means I was on TI Texas Instruments. I didn't get into video games until um, until um, Nintendo, but that doesn't mean I didn't I didn't get to know Pac-Man. And as you know the story, my mom basically taught me everything there is about Pac-Man because my first brush with Pac-Man was Miss Pac-Man. So <clears throat> I grew to enjoy Pac-Man, even though I wasn't really good at it. It kind of showed because, um, let's see, I I actually had a good score going into, um, into playing Miss Pac-Man earlier. I think I have a picture of it. If I, if I didn't show it, I'm sorry if I didn't post it. But, um, 
thing was, um, as far as I know, um, oh yeah, I forgot there was, there was a lot of Pac-Man, there was a lot of Pac-Man, so it was like, there's the world's largest Pac-Man, um, Pac-Man Battle Royale, um, the game I was playing earlier, out of the many games I was playing, was Galaga 88. Um, I think that was it. That's all I, that, that, that's all the pictures I had. Oh, and now side two. Oh, and there was this big ass, big ass, yeah, that's all I had. Well, I thought I'd taken a picture of, um, my score on Miss Pac-Man, but that's okay. Anyway, um, all the games were, of course, free play. So, um, so mind you, what I did was the most honorable thing I could ever do for my parents. I played a game for them. Since... My mom taught me how to play Pac-Man, and the only person who ever beaten her was my dad. I didn't really talk much about my dad because I don't remember him very much. But um, when it gets closer to um, Father's Day, I will. I do have a picture of my dad that I hadn't seen in a long, long time, and I would love to actually just take a picture of it and show it off. I got a story for that, too. Oh boy, I, I got a story for that one too. Anyway, point is this. After playing a bit of Pac-Man, so many versions of Pac-Man, there was Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, Galaga 88, God Plus, um, Dragon Buster, Tower Jiraga, Sky Kid Deluxe, um, Rolling Thunder, um, let me see what else did I play while I was up there, uh, Tower of Jiraga, mind you, I, I grew up with the old school, that's why, there's a reason why I play a lot of old school games, because of that one reason. That one reason is because I have more respect out of retro than I have modern. It's not that I don't care for modern. It's just that's me growing up. I grew up with Nintendo, SNES, Sega, um, and Sony PlayStation. But I didn't really get into it until, say, uh, when I was 13 years old. I really got into it, especially with RPGs, because I, I, I was going through some stuff. Anyway, the thing I wanted to point out is that while I was there, and I, while I was just, you know, just taking it all in, playing skee-ball and other, other notable things that was there, they called it Pac-Man Roller. But, you know, I played skee ball a couple times, you know, just, just having fun, just enjoying myself. And the one thing I noticed was, I noticed a lot, a lot of families. A lot of families were there, and they were actually enjoying themselves and playing a video game. And I'm like, wow, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, really, I'm like... I said, you know what? It's a great time to be a retro gamer. It's a great time to teach your kids what this is about. I said, this is not my generation. This is everybody's generation. This is everybody's generation one right here. Because this is like, Pac-Man is basically the link to every video game generation ever known. It's m much more visible than, say, even Mario. I mean, Mario is like the quintessential link to retro and modern, but Pac-Man is like the pioneer of retro and modern. 
because he never changes. He's like, he's still the same character. Even there was a Pac-Man mascot who kept showing up on the hour every hour from 12 to 6. I only went one day because a, I have a policy about certain expos. I never go and I, I never go to an expo on a Sunday. I said, unless if it was something like, you know, the comic book sci-fi expo, which is always on a second Sunday or a third Sunday or something like that. And I make the time to go there. Boom, not a problem. But in the case of this, what I do is I go one day. Apologies for that. I was, um, there's like a little interruption. But, um, as I was saying, thinking back from the 1980s, and we're in 2024, we're talking about 80s, 90s, 2000s. 20 LX, 20 double X. That's 50 years. Because really, if you think about it, the video game boom really didn't hit until the 80s anyway. So it's rather amazing after all this time that, you know, while modern gaming is getting this big boom and, you know, there's so many newbies on the scene that they that they like oh wonderful colors and whatnot you know that sort of thing as i feel they've been small they've been spoiled this new generation of gamers they've been spoiled they don't know they don't know what retro is about it's not about trending it's not about you know the algorithm or you know whatnot it's not about that this goes deeper pac-man goes deeper just like mario does because pac-man is basically the basic of basic of basic of all games and i play various games that had the pac-man vibe there's a game I played, I mean, yeah, for example, you have games like, if you never heard of this one, I'm not surprised because this is the first time me playing it, but I played a game while I was up there called Rompers. And in Rompers, you play this character that's like, I would like to think that's Tom Sawyer. And I suppose the... The love interest is Becky Thatcher. I, I don't know. And I, I don't even know. But it feels like like Wartner. If you never heard of Wartner, the Wartner Forest, yeah, it, it's kind of like that. But it, it, it has this Pac-Man vibe. It, it, or, or in the case, it might also feel like Lolo. If you never heard of Lolo, or what's called in Japan, Eggerland, Thing you never ever heard of how how put you know the following games on the market basically the adventures of lolo air fortress and the most notable one tabi or as it's fully called hoshi no kabi or kirby Kirby's Dream Land, take your pick. Anyway, point is, these are games that basically, these two titles have put everything else on the map. It has history. But the most basic of games, Pac-Man, it's like, if you don't believe it or not, 
Power Drawagas like that. Rally X or New Rally X. It's like that too. In which you're chasing, you know, this, that, and whatnot. Rompers is like that. Doraemon's like that. It, you know, Crater Maze. Any game that has a maze and you're basically picking up little items just to complete a level. Pac-Man basically was the originator of all that. I find it funny, but you know, that's what it is. On top of that, well, let's see. Um, um, it has brought together many a generation, and I was like, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's like, whether you're young or old or in between, it don't matter. I saw this while I was just, you know, in, you know, while in the area. And I'm like, wow, I see all these, all these families. I see kids playing Pac-Man. I see adults playing Pac-Man. It's, it, it, hell, they even, they were even playing Galaga. And I was like playing everything under sun. Well, almost everything under sun, but you get what I'm saying. And mind you, I'm like, I'm from the 70s. I'm, well, I'm really from the 80s, but, you know, I was born in this, the ass end of the 70s, but grew up during the 80s. So I was there when the video game boom hit. So, you know, that and my mom raised me up on video games. She raised me up on a lot of stuff. Because basically, you know, she was the only one who had time to teach me all this while I was, you know, going through school and going through everything else. And basically, it was a, a, a big, huge, it, it was a huge comfort to know that, you know, whatever it was, I didn't understand. She was there to help me understand. If it sounded wrong, she corrected me and made it sound right. That's fine. I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Anyway, <laughs> you know, excuse me. <sighs> um, Pac Man has been one of those series that basically, like I said, it's generational. And I feel that modern gaming do not see that. It's like you have games that are basically are like, wow. And you just say, this is what you could have. You could have a triple A game or, you know, this one was like, and, so, and I've been bugged by so many randos and like, well, you know, you could do this and then I did that. I'm like, I'm not interested. I said, like, you know, I, I said, I play certain games for two days. Mondays, excuse me, Mondays, if I sit down and have time to do this. Like I play retro, I play, I play modern. I say if I can squeeze in two good hours, two, three good hours for, say, one retro game in just one session. Okay, good. And if, you know, connection drops, I'm still going to record it. I'm still going to say, oh. And, you know, after two hours, three hours, okay. If it goes out, it keeps going, guess what? It's going up on Sunday. Not the actual Sunday, but the following Sunday after that. That's always been my thing with streams. Because I already got, you know, a day for daily content, and I got days for my stream content. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing this. You know, I'm playing this for two hours or... On the weekends, if I don't have anything to do, yeah, I'm gonna play a little, a little longer, like say, three, four, maybe almost damn near five hours. And all I'm doing is just making progress. I said, like, oh yeah, well, it'd be nice to play a game which you're, you know, mindlessly playing, and you know, you're just doing the same thing. It's called insanity. Yeah, I, I don't like insanity. 
I said, I'd be bored to death if I played something over and over and over for what reason? I have no idea. But that's neither here nor there. The thing, my point here is, it's amazing that one game like this, with one character like this, and by the way, this this was my first time actually playing something off of PS5. So, uh, yeah, I was playing um, Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Chomp Champs while I was up there, so therefore I was like, oh, there you go. Played it for a couple, you know, a couple rounds. I didn't play it for anything special. No, I was just playing it because, you know, for a whole lot of things because I hadn't played Pac-Man in, like, years. Hand-eye coordination, you know, helps with the hand-eye coordination peak thing. So it's like, mm. Plus, you know, proficiency and all that. So anyway, all I did was just do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, and do that. Guess what? It's fine. It's okay. I'm good with that. Okay? So the thing, me playing this one game, it made me feel a lot better because I've been going through a lot of shit. But the fact is, you know, this one character, as simple and amazingly fun, can really reach out the generations. And to this very day, it's gone strong. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So if you are like me, if you grew up during the 80s and this was one of your quote-unquote heroes, be thankful you were part of the 80s. Or, you know, if you knew about Pac-Man and you had a favorite, or hell, if you were just part of Namco, you know, be grateful you were around when when the boom was because that's where the fun was. So most people don't get it. It's like, you don't get it because you weren't there. But if you knew how much fun it really was just to play through a game and not worry about all the other stuff like this and this and this and this. Like, no, 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 no. It's not important. No, what's more important is you know, playing, just playing it just for the hell of it, just for the sake of fun. And that's what I do on my channel. I play games for the sake of fun. I I showcase games that not many people know about just because um, that was my mom's idea. She raised me on obscure games that she brought back from, you know, from being in choir. So, like I said, um, the games you see, like Chests of Obscurity and whatnot, that's where it all comes from. It's basically something she started when I was a kid because she brought me certain games to me. Like She wasn't sure if I would like it. And, like, and it's like, hmm. so well, so I like it. And, you know, years later, having a YouTube channel, I'm like, I'm pulling this old game out. It's like, hmm, James Knight. Hmm. And, you know, it's like you're rediscovering. You're rediscovering your childhood. You know, that's all I'm doing. I'm rediscovering my childhood. And it's like, that reminds me of a story. This is me all the time. It's reminding me of a story. As I'm playing something, if I was playing something on Saturn, I'm like, this reminds me of a story. I'm talking about this and talking about that. You know, behind the scenes of me. You know, my growing up. You know, my memories and everything. Games do be like that. Even Persona. The later, the later Persona games, like 3, 4, and 5, they trigger some things. So it's like, I start to talk about things that, you know, most people don't know about. But it's like, I know about it because I was in the midst of whatever kind of madness that was going on during that time in some form but you know it's not like I don't know about it but I was I, I can somehow relate but it's a beautiful thing though the way one game can kind of transcend across a generation and it never left and it's a beautiful thing just like if you 
have ever grew, grew up around the 80s or 90s for that matter then you knew basically that's what it was all about you knew I said that's something that you can't get rid of that's something that's like that can't be mass produced that's something that's like it drives you it lights you up it's a beautiful thing it's like it's like it's not just nostalgia it's something else it just <sighs> anyway I mean I had fun for what for all it's worth you know I stayed there till like 4 30 left I came back I came back home around 5 I was like you know what this is a good day for me and I could say nothing wrong with that I said you know what I'm satisfied I'm happy you know it, it's good it, it's wonderful I can't wait to see something else in the near future. I hope you will too. So until next time, I have been Easy Taisel Pakori, and um, <laughs> I'll see you next time for something else. Okay? Have a great weekend, and um, I'll see you next time, and enjoy this week's videos. You'll be glad you did. See you around.